Holy smokes, everyone. Margin debt has just hit a what the flippity flip flap flop all time high. What you need to know is there is huge amounts of leverage in the system and margin debt just hit a crazy high. But you know what happened when margin debt hit these crazy highs? Well, we had the dot com stock market crash. And also, when margin debt hit an all time high, we had the 2007 and 2008 market crash because all market indicators are saying get out now while you still can okay everyone so let's not waste any time let's get right into it so looky here everyone a glimpse at hidden stock market leverage or securities based lending as known stock market leverage spikes to wtf aka what the flippity flip flap flop all time high so listen to this everyone a big part of leverage in the stock market is not tracked and no one knows what it is. Occasionally, a tidbit bubbles to the surface when something blows up, such as the Ochagos fiasco. So I'm sure you all remember the Ochagos fallout and how it shows you know, that big banks need to be more resilient because what happened, there was one guy, um, one hedge fund manager or a family office uh, manager, he, for example, had a billion dollars in stocks and then so he goes to bank one or bank A and he says, look, I've got a billion dollars in stocks. I want to leverage this. Uh, how much of a margin loan can you give me? And so the bank says, oh, we'll lend you 50%. So they lend him a billion dollars. So it's a 50-50 uh, leverage there. But then what he does is he takes his uh, billion dollars and then he goes to another bank and borrows a billion dollars and then another one and another one. And he did this until he was leveraged 10 times. So he used that $1 billion portfolio to take on $10 billion in margin debt. Now you think this is the only guy that did this? Heck no, I'm sure there's many other small hedge funds or many other investors that have got multiple leverages against their one stock portfolio. So listen to this everyone. Another part of the stock market leverage securities base lending uh, can be found on the bank's balance sheets if banks choose to disclose it. So again, banks don't have to disclose how much leverage there is. So there is a lot more than we're seeing here. But not many banks disclose it and no one tracks this in a summary figure and we don't know what the totals are, but they're big. For example, Bank of America disclosed 45 billion in securities based lendings in its 10Q filing with the Securities Exchange Commission for the first quarter. This was up 25% than last year. So we're seeing a big increase in debt in the system and we'll get into what that means for the stock markets and the big risks in a moment. So don't go anywhere, anyone. The bank says that security-based lending has minimal credit risk for the bank because the collateral, namely stocks and other liquid securities, has a market value that is greater than or equal to the outstanding loan balance. Well, again, that's saying that, you know, that people aren't doing multiple loans with other banks. So Bank of America may think, you know, They've lent out a billion dollars to this guy and he's got a billion dollar stocks. But what happens if there's five other banks that have lent this person a billion dollars and they all try to go and get the collateral there and then it's not there. That's when we have the big Achegos incident. But imagine what this would mean for the stock market if it happened on a much larger scale. So it says here, on this basis, a customer with a portfolio of securities valued at 1 million could borrow up to 1 million against these securities and then take the money and buy something else with it including real estates or cryptos or pay for a divorce settlement. So this is another reason why we're probably seeing um, a boom in real estate because all the rich that have, for example, you know, a $10 million stock portfolio and, you know, over the past year, it's gone up 50%. Well, then they can borrow, for example, you know, $5 million out of that portfolio and use that to go up and buy up real estate. And this is what's making, you know, the real estate market even more bubblish. And really, I think you shouldn't be able to use leverage from stocks to go out there and buy real estate. But this is the risk, everyone. When the market value drops enough, the customer has to either bring in new money or start selling securities in the portfolio, which is when for selling sets in. And this is exactly why we had, you know, 7 to 10 to 13% drops uh, in the S&P 500, in the NASDAQ, in the Dow Jones in 2020. It was because 
people were getting margin calls and all their positions were getting liquidated. And that's what made this crazy fast sell-off because there was so much leverage in the system. But we'll get into a moment, leverage is even higher now. So if we do get a stock market crash, you know, all these banks will be calling up all these customers with these margin loans and they'll be liquidating their positions, making the sell-off even quicker, steeper, and even worse. And again, the big banks aren't being transparent here. It says JP Morgan in its 10Q following does not separate out its securities-based lending, but only says that it grew in Q1. So what is JP Morgan hiding here? They're not telling exactly how much um, margin debt there's in the system here. Goldman Sachs in its uh, 10Q following does not separate its uh, securities-based lending out either. So we've got some of the biggest banks here, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, they're just flat out not telling us how much leverage there is in the system which means we don't know what could happen, you know, in a big sell off, how much of these stocks are gonna get liquidated like that. Okay, everyone, now the moment we've all been waiting for, we're gonna get into this crazy high margin debt and it just hit an all time high and it just hit a what the flippy flip flap flop level. But there is one form of stock market leverage that is tracked. Regular margin loans and brokers that are reported by brokers to FINRA, which then reports them on a monthly basis, which it just did, and they're a doozy. So look at this, everyone. Stock market debt jumped by another 14 billion in May, bringing the historic spike to 862 billion, up by 202 billion in seven months. That's right, it's increased by 200 billion in just seven months. And it's up by 53% from January 2020 before the sell off started. So look at this chart, everyone. Look here, what happened here? The dot com bust. It spiked, boom, it caused a huge crash. The financial crisis, it hit an all time high. And then, boom, we saw a huge crash, 56%. And again, uh, the NASDAQ in the dot com bust fell 78%. Can you imagine what would happen? You know, people are feeling invincible right now, but what would happen if we saw a 50% decline in the S&P 500 and a 78% in the NASDAQ? And then in 2016, when it hit an all-time high, uh, the S&P fell around 19%. Again, uh, in 2018, when the Federal Reserve started hiking interest rates, people started selling off their margin, and we had a 20% decline. But look where we are now, people. WTF. It's at 860 billion, bigger than ever. The bubble of all bubbles. So listen to this, everyone. In this chart with a time span of over two decades, what important is not the absolute level back in the day compared to today because the purchasing power of the dollar has diminished. What is important is a trend of the steep increase before every stock market sell-off. So this indicator here, this chart has predicted every big huge stock market sell-off that we've had throughout history. Now, what we've had just yesterday is the Federal Reserve is now thinking about thinking about lifting interest rates and tapering, and they also did lift interest. Uh, they paid to banks that put money at the Fed uh, through their reverse repo market operations because the money markets uh, funds are pretty much going bust with interest rates at zero. So what would happen is if inflation keeps, you know, skyrocketing and, you know, the Federal Reserve was saying, you know, just two months ago, oh, don't worry, we're not going to lift interest rates till 2024. Well, now they're saying 2023. And if inflation does keep going up, not saying it's going to boom, but if it does, then they're going to bring forward those rate hikes to possibly mid 2022. And what that means is people have to pay high interest on their margin. So they're going to start selling off margin because it won't make sense. And then that's going to make a sell off. But then other people that don't want to sell their margin, well, they're going to get margin calls anyways when the stock market does start to climb by around 15 to 20%. So listen to this, everyone. Margin debt is the only known stock market leverage measure that we have and is an indicator of the trend in overall stock market leverage. It just shows the tip of the iceberg. So this is just a tip of the iceberg, everyone, because there's also a lot of derivatives in the markets. A big surge in margin balances precedes sell-offs. 
They don't trigger sell-offs and they don't predict sell-offs, but leverage pumps up stock prices by creating buying pressure as borrowed money surges into the market. And then when selling starts, forced selling by leverage investors creates selling pressure and amplifies a sell-off and triggers its own downward spiral. So this is what we've been talking about on the channel, everyone. Everyone's put all their money in. Now everyone's maxed out their debt. So there's not more, much more money that can go into the markets. But once people start selling, this will accelerate the selling. The more leverage in the bubble, the quicker the bubble bursts and the bigger the decline will be. And of course, the Fed created this problem and now they're one trying to provide the solution. So again, they're the arsonist and also the firefighter. They create the fire and they're now trying to put out the fire. Listen to this, everyone. The Fed, who policies have purposefully encouraged and continued this spike in leverage, warn out of the other side of its mouth about excess leverage in its financial stability report, and it warns specifically about the vast unknown parts of leverage amongst hedge funds and insurance company, and it pointed at the Archegos as an example of what happens when something goes awry. So the Fed saying here itself, it doesn't even know how much leverage is out there in the system with all these hedge funds and insurance companies. So we don't know exactly how much danger we're in here, people. So listen to this, everyone. This is crazy. Neither Credit Suisse nor any other prime brokers disclosed ahead of time how much leverage they were backing in case of just one client, Archegos. The amount of leverage didn't come out until it blew up the fund and caused over 10 billion of bloodletting among the prime brokers. So prime brokers have many clients. This type of leverage was just one example. It wasn't even related to the securities-based lending. That's a, that's a different example of stock market leverage. Margin debt is another example of stock market leverage, and there are other forms out there. We don't know how much leverage there is, but from the trends indicated in margin debt, we know it's huge and it's ballooning. Whoa, 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 everyone. So this is absolutely crazy. You know, this is what I've been warning about. You know, I'm not trying to put out doom and gloom out there. I'm literally, you know, hand on my heart. I don't want to see people get wrecked because, you know, the bubble can go on for, you know, another six to 12 months. Who knows how long it can go on? I don't know exactly when. Nobody knows. But we know the area. We know the territory we're in here. And we're in uncharted, bubblish territory. We've never been before. And of course, all the indicators I show you, like the S&P 500 PE ratio, we're at all-time high of 44, where the average is 17 to 20. The Warren Buffett indicator, the stock market is 233% of GDP, which is very overvalued. And like we we're talking about yesterday, the Fed has moved up its timeline for rate hikes as inflation rises. So this is a huge risk for all the leverage and debt that's in the system there. And if we look at the futures, because as of recording this, it's about an hour before the market's open. So we had a bit of red uh, yesterday. The futures are a bit red now. Uh, the Dow Jones is down 0.33%, the S&P down 0.4%, and the NASDAQ down 0.5%. But um, look at this, look at the, this is the gold futures, not the spot price. Gold futures down 4.29% and silver down 5.2%. And, you know, through the futures and the paper, um, gold and silver markets and the derivatives, uh, this is how they manipulate the gold and silver price. But if we just look at the um, spot price, we can see commodities um, are selling off here. Uh, platinum down 3.2%, silver down 2.3%, uh, gold spot price it's broke it's broken 1800, um, lumber's crashing. Uh, the 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 market hasn't opened for lumber yet, but lumber's you know broken a thousand dollars from its high of 1700, um, and we can see there has been you know a bit of a sell off in all commodities in the industrials, in the agricultural commodities. So this is what I've been saying here, people. When this bubble does finally pop, when we do get a big sell-off, there'll be nowhere really safe to run or hide. You know, bonds will sell off, the stock market will sell off. We're seeing a sell-off right now uh, in precious metals and commodities. Even Bitcoin's having a bit of a sell-off, but it's not really reacting too much because it's already had um, a huge 40% drop. So it's uh, pretty obvious why it hasn't had a sell-off. But what I did say is when the Federal Reserve does start hinting that it will lift interest rates, the dollar will increase. So you may want to have a bit of cash in your portfolio. I'm not saying go and sell all your investments or liquidate anything, 
but cash won't be trash when the Federal Reserve does start hiking interest rates. Because look at this, everyone. We can see here with the US dollar index, since the Federal Reserve uh, did um, announce uh, they're going to start lifting interest rates, look, the dollar index has gone from uh, 90.55, and we can see here a big spike, um, and it's gone up to around 91.7. So if you did have you know, a bit of cash, well, your purchasing power would have actually increased um, and then, you know, we do see a sell-off in the precious metals, in cryptos and stocks. Well, then you can go and buy up everything for a discount. Because what you have to know about the markets is they react before things happen. So the stock market started to price in the talk or the Fed thinking about thinking about lifting interest rates um, before it happens. And they're trying to price in these rate hikes before it happens. So in 2023, when the Fed does start lifting interest rates, even though I think they will uh, lift interest rates much sooner. Just for example, it won't react then, it's trying to price it in now. Same thing with gold and silver. You're probably wondering why are they falling now when the Fed hasn't lift interest rates. Again, markets try to predict things six to 12 months in advance. Now for all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. If you haven't already, please tap that like and subscribe button I'll keep you updated with the latest that's happening in the stock market, housing market, and global finance news. If you're bored, I'll put up some of my other videos here. I'll see you all there.